For our wetland delineation and classification assignment, we chose to examine Shumper Pond, a wetland area located within the Seven Islands Wildlife Refuge in Knoxville, Tennessee. The Seven Islands Wildlife Refuge encompasses 360 acres of wildlife sanctuary that also provides for recreational use for the general public. It lies along the banks of the French Broad River and includes areas of aquatic, riparian, and upland habitats that are managed for the benefit of wildlife species. Small depressional wetlands like Shumpert Pond exist within the managed hilly uplands. Shumpert Pond was named after former Knox County Executive Tommy Shumpert, who played a critical role in the establishment of Seven Islands Wildlife Refuge. Several projects, including nest box installments and native plantings, have been successful in promoting the pond as a valuable piece of wildlife habitat within the refuge. The pond has been kept fishless and supports an abundance of amphibians and waterfowl. Our objective was to delineate the wetland boundary and fully classify all re regions within that boundary for Shumpert Pond, according to the protocols of the United States Army Corps of Engineers and the United States Fish and Wildlife Service. The boundary between the wetland areas surrounding Shumper Pond and adjacent upland habitat was determined using Army Corps delineation protocol. Plots were placed at the one half, one and two meter marks from the low water line along each of four transects as shown in this diagram. At each plot, the three key wetland ingredients of vegetation, soil and hydrology were surveyed and observations recorded. Various plot sizes based on stratotypes and the 50-20 rule were used in evaluating hydrophyte dominance, soils characterized, and hydrology indicators within each plot were recorded. If all three of these indicators supported the conclusion of wetland presence, the plot was considered within the wetland. The boundary between wetland and upland regions was placed between the first transition found between these plots. A digital ed elevation model within ArcGIS was then used to extend this elevation where the wetland characteristics ended around the pond. The delineated wetland included the inundated portion as well as the 0.75 meter boundary around the water's edge. We chose this boundary because we routinely found that wetland indicators ceased between the one half and one meter plots. Between one half and one meter plots, plant communities changed from wetland to more upland species. Soils were no longer hydric, and wetland hydrology indicators disappeared at the same boundary. The area within the delineated border was classified to subclass and the water regime modifiers indicated using the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service classification system by Cowardin et al. 1979. Precise definitions and classification criteria for each of the identified subclasses can be found within this document. The borders of the determined subclass regions were outlined using a Trimble Recon GPS unit, and to verify the ocular estimations of wetland subclass regions, one plot was inspected per wetland subclass to measure the relative dominance of plants and other variables pertinent to wetland classification. Systems found included lacustrine and palustrine areas, and water regime modifiers included permanently flooded and seasonally flooded areas. Within the lacustrine system, the boundary between the littoral and lunatic zones was based on a depth of 2 meters. Bottom types further classified these areas into zones of unknown bottom, mud, and organic unconsolidated bottoms. Emergent, non-persistent vegetation was also present within the lacustrine system, as well as regions of aquatic algal bed. The palustrine system present at Shumpert Pond included permanently and seasonally flooded areas further classed into regions defined by dominant vegetation, including zones of emergent persistent vegetation, emergent non-persistent vegetation, and scrub shrub broadleaf deciduous vegetation. These classification zones were mapped and acreages calculated within ArcGIS. In conclusion, the wetland area of Shumpert Pond contained the pond itself and a skinny zone along its shoreline. This conclusion is supported by evidence of a brief transition from wetland to upland observed around the edge of the pond. With the continued advance of modern development, it will become increasingly more important to accurately identify wetlands so that these important areas will be protected for future generations.